All right, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, I just returned from, uh, I was up in Portland this week uh, at a retreat, and um, you know what I always notice when I get outside of Los Angeles? Is that people are a little less stressed than they are in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, I'm at the airport in Portland, and I went up to this little stand and to get a cup of tea. And as I say to the young lady, I say, hi, oh, yeah, can I have a Earl Grey decaf, please? And she goes, how are you today? <laughs> like, she's re but, like she's really interested. And I'm, Fine, thanks. You know, and I'm looking at my phone. And she's like, so did you have a good flight? Where are you coming from? And where are you off to? Have you been to Portland before? And she's just like chatting me up like there's no tomorrow. And it's like, I had to like, like do like a little check here. It's like, OK, OK, I have to remember, I'm not in LA. <laughs> not everybody is incredibly stressed, and not everybody sees themselves as the center of the universe. <laughs> and I put my phone away, and I said, I'm great, thanks. I came from Los Angeles, and I'm here for, oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh my god, I hope you have a great time at your retreat. And so I was like, oh, wow, OK, thanks. Thanks for the tea. <laughs> It, it's an adjustment, you know. I have to sort of go through like this, um, this, this place that's not. Uh, it, I, I sort of go through like spiritual Switzerland, you know, when I travel out. Okay, I'm not in Germany anymore, and I'm not in France. I'm in Switzerland. I'm in this middle place. So, anyway, so today I'm going to talk about um, some, perhaps some new ideas uh, around healing. Now, Ernest Holmes says that we cannot have a demonstration greater than our realization. Right. So healing, when I'm thinking about healing today, it's like, well, yes, of course, I, I, we all, in fact, so many people come to a church like ours because they are seeking some kind of healing somewhere in their life. But today, I'm thinking of healing as being really the restoration of peace and harmony to our lives. Right? Now, Ernest also says in our textbook that there's nothing to heal. There's only God to reveal. So what he's saying there is it's all God. And we've covered all God up with some other stuff, which is why we don't see that it's all God. It looks like something else. So where does healing come from? Well, I would say, in the big picture, it really comes through this idea of divine grace, which the science of mind says is the divine givingness of spirit. The spirit, the infinite, only knows to give of itself to each and every one of us, and it's doing that giving all the time. Like right now, it just gave me sight. <laughs> OK. Uh, this is different than thinking my positive thinking is what's making something happen. Right? We can have greater dominion in our life. We really can. You know? it, but, but we can't. But to have greater dominion, what I realize is that we cannot continue to feel or see ourselves or talk about ourselves like we are some kind of a victim of anything from our past. Right? So that whole victim thing has got to go. Fans of the Three Stooges? Three Stooges fans? Am I, the old, am I that old? Oh my god. Because I, I can hear Curly in my head saying, oh, I'm a victim of circumstance. Right? I remember that episode, you know, and, I, and a lot of people go through life just saying, I'm a victim of circumstance. Right? Now, we are now, we are right now spiritual beings, and therefore, we are never spiritually powerless. Now, I know on the earth plane, yes, there are lots of experiences of powerlessness, but spiritually, Spiritually, I believe that we are never powerless because the God who saved Moses, the God who saved Daniel, you know, is the God that I know is within me, is the God that I know exists within you. And so therefore, if God can usher other people through really difficult circumstances, I believe that that's available to us. And part of that is we have to take dominion. All right? So God is a present help in trouble. I have heard that since I came into metaphysics. I don't even know where it comes from. Somebody will tell me after the service, I'm sure, because that is your delight, and I want you to. Right? So again, the God that we are talking about is a spirit, is spirit, is infinite, is intelligent, is love itself. And so that's the God that Moses and Daniel called on, and it's the God that we are working with calling on, in relationship with, using. So I think every one of us, as students of metaphysics, you know, I used to work for Peggy Bassett at the Huntington Beach Church years ago down in Orange County. And Peggy Bassett used to say all the time, when you come to a religious science church, we do not ask you to leave your brains at the door. 
And, and I think, God, that's kind of harsh, you know? And then after I was there for a while, I realized, oh, she's really right. Because in the science of mind, we want you to think about it. We want you to think about our principles. And then we want you to reason for yourself. Don't just accept some conditions out in the world as, oh, this must be the way it has to be, or God must want me to suffer or struggle or lack like this. You know, look, I believe that God loves us. I really do. We chant that, God's the love that I am. And sometimes people say to me, well, I don't get that, God's the love that I am. And I said, well, just, just reverse it. I am the love that God is, okay? If you don't get God's the love that I am, say it to yourself like this, I am the love that God is. You know, people think that big healings in life, like in the Bible, are just not possible to us today. But, you know, there are tons and tons of healing in the Bible again and again and again. And our teaching, the science of mind teaching, started as a healing teaching movement. You know, so what these healings in the Bible show us is the power of, of love. That, you know, every one of them shows us how the love of God is given freely to each of us if we can open ourselves up and accept it. These stories of healing show us the power of spirituality. They show us the power of knowing our own connection with the power of God within. Over all of the appearances that we see in the world around us. Because God, I believe, is always, always willing, able, and ready to help us and help us heal. Because science of mind says the principle we work with is dependable, right? That it's provable, it's repeatable. Now the law that we talk about all the time here is really the principle of truth. And this is, this is what we work with always and rely on. You know, when I talk with people, it's their idea of prayer often is that like, they're gonna say this wonderful prayer and that prayer is like a Frisbee somehow. And they're just going to like lean way back, and they're going to take that Frisbee and whip it up into the heavens and hope that some guy in a cloud catches it, reads it, records it in the book, and makes it happen. Uh, obviously, we don't think that that's um, a most accurate depiction of how it works. Uh, but because we're working with a principle, a spiritual principle, this is something that we can rely on. You know, Jesus sent his disciples out to heal as he did. And you know the amazing thing? They did it. They actually did it. Because when he says, greater things than this shall you do, you know, we think, oh, he's just being nice. He's just being nice. It's like when people say, oh, come anytime. No, oh, they're just being nice. They don't really mean it, you know? <laughs> See, but the, there are laws in life, just like there are laws in mathematics and thermodynamics and physics and aerodynamics. Those laws are all invisible. You know, they're non physical laws. They're invisible laws. And just like the spiritual laws that we work with in this teaching of the science of mind. See, because, see, because if, we can, if we can grasp a greater spiritual truth and live from that, that's going to make our life work out for us so much better. So that truth that I'm asking us to get a hold of and live from is quite simply this, and it's in, it's in John, in the Bible, and it's that God is love. Now, we've all heard that. God is love, God is love, God is love. But love is what is the most important thing in life. You know, when people get to the end of their life, and I have been with many, many people um, when they're in the departure lounge, uh, as I like to think of it, I have been with many people. Nobody has ever said to me, God, I wish I spent more time cutting the grass. Or I wish I did more sit-ups. Or you know what was really important that I organized my garage. I can't believe I'm going to leave the planet and I didn't organize my garage. Nobody says that. What everybody says at the end of their life is, wow, the love in my life is the most important thing. In fact, I thought I was here for all these other things. But what I really came here to experience, to drink in fully and give out equally as fully, is the love within me. That's what we're here for. I believe that that's so. And so what this comes down to, to for me is that love is what heals. Now, the love of God we teach in the science of mind is freely given. It's always being given to us. And sometimes we're in the mood to receive it and accept it and believe it. And sometimes we're not because you know how we are. I'm just not in the mood for good today. 
I just don't want my life to get better. I'm having a pity party and I'm going to stay here. That's what I'm going to do. OK, great. And at some point, you'll feel differently. And we welcome that. We welcome that. See, scriptures teach us that we are made in the image and likeness of God. And another way to say that is that we are made in the image and likeness of love itself. Every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth is an emanation of God's love. Now, sometimes we remember it and sometimes we don't. Some days we do better with it and some days not so much. But love is at the center of who we really, really are. And so we have to hold on to this sense of ourselves, that who I am as a being is I am the energy, the activity of God's love on earth. And that's true, I believe, for every one of us. You know, the Bible's, uh, I think the Bible is showing us uh, a spiritual, not a material basis for living. Because when we have a right understanding, when we really understand something, or, and what I mean by that is, this is what Ernest Holmes calls a deep spiritual realization. When we have a deep spiritual realization of something, it changes things. It solves problems. Conditions shift for us. I was thinking about this. There have been so many studies, and everybody, if you know, everybody knows about placebos, right? It's when they give you a sugar pill in a study, and they say, well, you know, some people are going to get the drug, and some people are going to get the sugar pill. Well, you know, people do remarkably well with the placebo, the sugar pill. And I think, well, what's, what's up with that? It's like, well, I think that has everything to do with, with their faith, with their belief, with their trust, right? That, that people do what, so, so is the power in the external thing or is the power in what's going on in here? Well, in Science of Mind, we say, well, God, God works through the pill and the prayer, right? But if you're going to take the pill, know that it's God that's working through the pill, and that's why the pill is really benefiting you. Because if you look at the pill and say, well, this isn't going to do me any good, and it's going to give me a headache, and it's going to upset my stomach, and I don't know why I bother, well, then don't take the pill. <laughs> you know, because no good can possibly come from that. But if you hold whatever that is in your hand, and I don't care if it's your multivitamin or, or some medicine the doctor's given you, no, no, hold that pill in your hand and know that I know that infinite, loving, intelligent spirit is working through this for my highest and greatest expression of life. Chug the pill and be alive. You know, that's what we want to do. So, yeah, I know. Huh? And I actually do that every morning with my vitamins. And I, and, and I think every morning my neighbors think, oh, here he goes again. Uh, but, but I think it works for me. You know, science of mind teaches us that God...